let us study about the design of two way slabs here we shall deal with the theory of two way slabs the important terminologies the effect of support restraints and about the relevant caudal design parameters definition two way slabs are those which deform with significant curvatures in the two perpendicular directions we have already learned about the one way slabs and two way slabs and there we discussed that one way slab is a slab where deflection is prominent only along the shorter span but two way slabs are not so they deflect about both the spans so both shorter span as well as the longer span are relevant in the design of two way slabs in the design of one way slab we have taken a 1 meter wide strip along the shorter span but in case of two way slabs the design should be performed by considering 1 meter wide strips along both longer span as well as along the shorter span okay so bear it in mind that in two way slabs at the time of design we have to consider 1 meter wide strip along both the shorter span as well as along the longer span now generally we encounter simply supported slabs wherein we define effective span as the minimum of clear span plus d or center to center distance between the supports so we already know about this provision of indian standard is 456 in simply supported beams or slabs this provision is valid that is the effective span is the minimum of clear span plus d or center to center distance between supports now in case of two way slabs since we already said that both the longer span as well as the shorter span are relevant effective span along longer side as well as the shorter side is important and so we define the terms shorter effective span and longer effective span designated by lx and ly respectively so lx wherever you see lx it represents the shorter effective span and ly represents the longer effective span and we know this condition that the longer side divided by the shorter side should be less than 2 for two way slabs so this condition should essentially be satisfied the longer span divided by shorter span should be less than 2 for two way slabs no further about the theory of the two way slabs it's very important because the deflections are predominant in both the directions now we are going to explain about two important types of slabs based on the effect of support restraints let us consider the case of a simply supported slab that is exactly what you see here in this figure these simply supported slab when you apply load the inner regions tend to move down but since they have no restraints along the outer edges they tend to move up especially along the corners so the corners have a tendency to get lifted up when you subject such slabs to loads so when loads come over it the corners tend to get lifted up okay and this condition is very very important because there is a possibility that you may perform some construction along the outer edges of this discontinuous slab okay so this slab along the outer edges if you perform some construction or if you apply some loads such that you prevent such lifting up of corners from happening as in this case then you see here in this figure you see that the corners are held down but this will result in what is known as twisting moment in the slab so due to the external load the corners tend to lift up but if you apply some load such that the corners 
tend to be held down then in such cases the slab experiences unusual moments known as torsion moment or twisting moment or in short torsion due to the effect of this torsion the slab you can see the profile has twisted especially around the corners and it develops undesirable stresses and moments at the corners because of which cracks can develop at the corners okay so such cracks are not desirable and we need to do something about it so one thing you should maintain in your mind that when you apply loads to such discontinuous simply supported slabs okay the corners tend to get lifted up but if they are free to lift up then it does not develop any torsion or any torsional moments and we call such slabs as torsionally unrestrained two way slabs so such slabs in which the corners are free to lift up are called torsionally unrestrained two way slabs but if you apply some loads such that the corners are held down by force then such slab corners are prevented from lifting up and we call such slabs as torsionally restrained two way slabs so you must understand the stark distinction between the two types of slabs the torsionally unrestrained slabs and the torsionally restrained slabs the torsionally unrestrained slabs are free to lift up along the corners but the torsionally unrestrained slabs you are holding it down such that they develop twisting moments and as a result of these twisting moments or torsion they develop cracks along the corners as you see in this figure they develop cracks along the corners at the top of the slab as well as along the bottom also and the direction of crack you see this is the corner of that slab and the direction of crack is like this along the top but it is perpendicular to the cracks at the top at bottom so at the bottom the direction of cracks is perpendicular to the direction of cracks at the top okay so these are the potential cracks which may develop along the corners if in case you are having a torsionally restrained two way slab okay but to prevent such cracks you need to do something and hence we need to provide reinforcements in the direction perpendicular to the cracks such that the cracks are arrested okay so since at the top this is the direction of cracks we should provide reinforcements perpendicular to it like this okay since at the bottom the cracks are in this direction we have to provide reinforcements perpendicular to it like this so these are shown by dashed lines okay but provision of reinforcements in the diagonal direction like this is practically difficult and hence we advise to provide reinforcements in two perpendicular directions like shown here in this figure both at the top of the slab as well as along the bottom of the lab okay so along both the top as well as bottom surface of the slab we have to provide reinforcements in both these directions okay so effectively you have four layers of reinforcement one going like this at the top one going like this at the top the same way you provide reinforcements along this and this direction at the bottom also so you have four layers of reinforcement bars okay now coming to the design of two way slabs just like one way slab we have to determine the depth of slab by limiting the l by d ratio for which you have to refer to page number 39 in which it is said that as per clause 
the shorter of the two spans should be used for calculating the span to effective depth ratios so you know the span to effective depth ratio from page number 37 we have already had a discussion about this particular clause in our previous lecture so here the effective span to effective depth ratios for different types of support conditions were explained 7 for cantilever 20 for simply supported beams and continuous for uh, will have the value 26 and you have to multiply it with a modification factor suitably assumed as in case of one way slabs and for the calculation of this effective span to effective depth ratio you make use of the shorter span and not the longer span okay so for this particular case for for setting for determining the slab thickness by limiting the l by d ratio you make use of the shorter of the two spans for calculation of the l by d ratios and one thing to be maintained to be kept in mind is that the percentage tension steel required in two way slabs in shorter span is less than that required for the one way slab hence we need to use a higher value of modification factor so you know that uh, the percentage tension reinforcement uh, being used in one way slabs it was of the order of 0 0.4 to 0 0.6 percentage tension steel was used and correspondingly we had a modification factor of 1.25 but here in case of two-way slabs since we are designing the steel reinforcements along both the directions uh, the percentage tension reinforcement required in the two-way slabs is substantially lower than one-way slab so the percentage tension steel in two-way slab is lesser than that required in one-way slab and if you observe this figure 4 we have already had a discussion about figure 4 there for lower values of percentage tension steel you require higher values of modification factors to be applied so let us assume that for two-way slabs the modification factor chosen is 1.5 okay so that modification factor to be taken care here while you determine the effective span to effective depth ratio should be 1.5 for two way slabs it was 1.25 for one way slabs okay the indian standard code is 456 page number 39 if you refer there is an additional condition being provided for specifically two way slabs that too those two-way slabs having shorter spans less than 3.5 meters only so those having shorter spans with uh, which is less than 3.5 meters and those with loading the live loads less than 3 kilo newton per meter square then the effective span to effective depth ratio for such kind of slabs are directly given in this particular close it is 35 for simply supported slabs and it is 40 for continuous slabs and you have to multiply them by a factor 0 0.8 if you are choosing high strength deformed bars for reinforcements okay so this particular close is applicable only if the shorter span of your slab is less than 3.5 meter otherwise not required okay so if only if your shorter span of the two-way slab is less than 3.5 meter and you have a uh, live load less than 3 kilo newton per meter square then only this particular clause you can make use of this is given in page number 39 in all the other cases which is mostly the case in all the other cases you should resort to this particular clause in the design okay now once you determine the depth of the slab now you are bound to determine the moment to be resisted by the slab and that too we discussed we have to consider one meter wide strip of slab along both the direction along the shorter as well as the longer spans and for this purpose you need to refer to page number 90 of IS 456 there you will see under two headings one for restrained slabs and the other for simply supported slabs 
restrained slabs we already discussed these are slabs the torsionally restrained slabs are those where the corners are prevented from lifting up so the corners which tend to lift up are being suitably held down using some means such that they develop torsion or twisting moments and you need to provide torsion reinforcements in this case of restraint slabs so such restraint slabs if you if it is asked in the question if it is given in the question that the two way slab the corners are prevented from lifting up if this is given in the question you have to use this set of equations to determine the bending moments along both the directions mx and my okay so mx you it is defined here as the moment on the strips of unit width 1 meter width spanning lx and ly respectively so mx and my represents the moments to be resisted by the slab along the shorter as well as the longer span okay and to find these moments what is the equation given here it is alpha x into w lx square and for my it is alpha y into w lx square and what is alpha x and alpha y alpha x and alpha y are moment coefficients which we will obtain from table 26 okay table 26 is available in page number 91 you can refer to that and you can determine the values of alpha x and alpha y suitably substituted it here you will obtain the moments to be resisted by the slab now one thing to be borne in mind is that table 26 in order to obtain the moment coefficients you need to know the boundary conditions of the slabs that is whether what are the supports or the the edges of the slabs edge conditions of the slab that is what is known as the boundary conditions the edge conditions whether they are simply supported or they are continuous in nature you need to know that okay and you should know another factor that is ly by lx value also for the particular slab you would be knowing the ly by lx ratio and using both these criteria you can easily find out the moment coefficients alpha x and alpha y okay so this is the case of determining the moment to be resisted by the slab only if it is a restrained slab or if the corners are prevented from lifting up now if in the question it is given that the corners are free to lift up the corners are not held down they are free to lift up then in such cases you know that torsion or twisting moments do not develop there twisting moments do not develop in such kind of slabs we call them simply supported slabs there again in order to find the moments to be resisted along the shorter as well as the longer span you have these equations these will look similar to the previous set of equations for restraint slabs but the alpha x and alpha y values are different for which you need to refer table 27 table 27 is again available in page number 91 you refer it you will understand that the this particular case it is not depending upon the boundary conditions it depends only upon the ly by lx ratio okay now we already said in table number 26 the values of alpha x and alpha y depend upon the boundary conditions so we should know what are the possible boundary conditions for the slabs you observe this figure this is a typical plan view of a building composed of different types of slabs and we are going to look into each of it now you see figure this uh, slab number 1 which is marked as slab number 1 this is slab number 1 you observe all the edges so when you get a slab you observe all the edges you need to know whether it is a continuous edge or a discontinuous edge see all the four edges they are continuing to the adjacent slabs so typically slab number 1 is a continuous slab and we call it interior panels because they are surrounded by slabs on all the four edges okay now you observe slab number 2 this is slab number 
you have one discontinuous edge here the slab is discontinuing here but all the three other edges are continuing to the adjacent slabs okay so typically two is a one short edge discontinuous slab so which edge is discontinuous it is a shorter edge which is discontinuous and all the other edges are continuous okay now coming to third type slab 3 you see that here it is the longer edge that is discontinuous and all the other three edges are continuous okay now coming to slab type 4 where you will find that one longer edge and the adjacent shorter edge both of them are discontinuous the other pair of shorter edge and longer edge they are continuous okay here in this type 4 one corner if you observe this particular corner is composed of two discontinuous set of edges okay and this corner if you observe they are composed of two continuous set of edges okay now coming to slab type 5 here two short edges discontinuous so observe here here two short edges they are not adjacent edges they are opposite edges these short edges are discontinuous they are not continuing here but the longer edges are continuing to the adjacent slab coming to slab type 6 slab type 6 the longer edges are discontinuous while the shorter edges are continuous okay now coming to slab type 7 you will observe three edges are discontinuous and one longer edge is continuous okay coming to slab type 8 if you if you observe here it is the three edges here again discontinuous one shorter edge this is a shorter edge this one shorter edge is continuous and slab type 9 if you observe here this is a isolated kind of building and they it is composed of only a single room and it is not continuing to any of the four directions and this is completely discontinuous slab so four edges discontinuous slabs okay so why we learned about these nine types of slabs we must understand that only such corners of slabs where both adjacent edges are continuous will not lift up so in case of these slabs slab one two three you will encounter that any corner you take the adjacent edges are continuous in nature so if the slab is continuing to the other to the adjacent slab in such cases the corners will not lift up okay they are held down by default and they do not uh, they do not develop any twisting moments also so we don't have to bother about such kind of corners in which the adjacent uh, edges are continuing to the next slabs and the corners will be held down by default and they do not develop torsion okay now take slab 2 and slab 3 again you will see the corners there are corners where the adjacent edges are continuing and they are held down they cannot lift up okay now coming to slab type 4 you observe that there is a corner here we know that there is a corner here with adjacent edges discontinuous so these two edges are discontinuous in such cases they have a tendency to lift up so in any slab where both the adjacent edges are discontinuous will be free to lift up okay so there are many kinds of such slabs uh, slab 4 slab uh, 7 you observe slab 8 you observe slab 9 in all these cases you will find corners with adjacent edges discontinuous and they will have a tendency to lift up when subjected to external loads now you encounter some slabs like slab number 5 and slab number 6 and some parts of sl other slabs also you will find that any corner you take here let us say this is a corner you are considering here in this corner this is a con discontinuous edge but this is a continuous edge okay so in such cases 
such corners will have a partial tendency only to get lifted up okay so such corners can lift up partially only okay so they have a tendency to lift up partially and they can develop torsion moments only partially okay not to the full extent as it occurs in case of other kind of slabs we already discussed free to lift up cases so in such cases you have to provide torsion reinforcements as well fine so this statement you keep in mind only those corners where lifting up occurs experience torsion if held down okay so those corners like this here you observe this corner or this corner or this corner you take these corners have adjacent edges discontinuous and they are free to lift up also and such corners since the co they are free to lift up will experience torsion if they are held down so they do not experience torsion if they are free to lift up but if you are definitely in the question if it is given that the corners are prevented from lifting up definitely then you have to go for this particular case where such corners are going to be held down and they are likely to experience torsional moments and you have to design torsion reinforcement for them as well okay now coming to the case how to provide torsion reinforcements in slabs so we already had a discussion about different types of slabs and we need to know how to provide torsion reinforcements for such slabs corners where they have high tendency to get lifted up but are prevented from lifting up okay so page 90 of indian standard code you refer to clause d 1.8 this gives idea about how to provide torsion reinforcements so it says torsion reinforcement shall be provided at any corner where the slab is simply supported on both edges meeting at that corner so they by saying the slab is simply supported on both edges we mean discontinuous slab edges so slabs are discontinuous for example you take this slab they are discontinuous along this edge as well as this edge but it is continuous along this edge and this edge okay it is continuing to the adjacent slabs so this is a corner in which the adjacent edges are simply supported or discontinuous so we have to provide torsion reinforcement at this corner so that is exactly what is shown in this figure and how to provide how far should we provide to what extent should we provide the torsion reinforcement that is also mentioned here extending from the edges a minimum distance of one fifth of the shorter span so we know that this is shorter span this is lx so one fifth of the shorter span should be provided in a square fashion so you have to provide reinforcement along this particular square and the side of the square is one fifth of this shorter span that is lx divided by 5 is exactly the extent to which you have to provide the torsion reinforcements okay now it is given the area of reinforcement in each of the four layers so it is also saying that you have to provide four layers of torsion reinforcements along these corners where lifting up is likely to happen and you are uh, you are holding it down and what is the reinforcement to be provided so as we already discussed we have to provide reinforcement like this direction along this direction also that too both at the top as well as at the bottom of the slab so in total you have four layers and what is the reinforcement area to be provided along the each of these layers so that is explained here the area of reinforcement in each of these four layers shall be the three quarters of the area required for the maximum mid span moment in the slab so by which we mean the maximum mid span moment what is the moment you know that it is there is mx and my which you would be calculating from this equation okay from this equation you shall be calculating mx and my fine and what is the corresponding area of steel which you would be designing for the maximum moment out of it okay so what is the maximum moment out of mx and my you would be de designing 
or determining the area of steel corresponding to it okay and that area three quarters of that area three quarters of that area that is three by four times ast you will provide at the top as well as at the bottom and that too along each direction along this direction as well as this direction for each layers each of the four layers you will be providing the area of reinforcement equal to 3 by 4 times ast okay now the code also so, uh, mentions about providing torsion reinforcement along corners in which only one edge is discontinuous and the other is continuous for example you consider this corner here this is the slab this is the slab under consideration and this is a corner and you know that this edge this edge is short while this edge is uh, this edge is discontinuous while this edge is continuous okay and in such cases we say partial lifting up is likely to happen and the torsion that develops there is also partially in nature okay so the reinforcement to be provided there is only equal to half of that described in the clause D 1.8 that is in this provision we talked about such corners where both the edges are discontinuous and whatever reinforcement is provided here you have to provide just half of it here okay whatever reinforcement you have provided in such corners where lifting up is completely prevented you provide it here fine and it also says that torsion reinforcement is not provided it is not required at all in such corners which contains edges over both of which the slab is continuous for example this corner of the slab you see this edge as well as this edge both are continuous so hence we don't require torsion reinforcements here okay so if you are providing torsion reinforcement just provide it along those corners where both the edges are discontinuous and if there is corner above, around which partial lifting up is likely to happen and you are holding it down then provide just half of it here same is the case in this corner of the slab also but in cases of such corners where the adjacent edges are continuous in nature you don't have to provide torsion reinforcements at all okay so you see this figure this is exactly what we have discussed we are just providing reinforcements in four layers so one is along this direction one is perpendicular to it at the top you see these dots are representing that reinforcements provided perpendicular to the first layer okay so this is the set of reinforcement provided at the top similar way you have to provide it at the bottom also okay so this is how the corners cross section will look like now we shall be solving a couple of examples